How's this for irony? CNEN wanted to learn about Anish Tateja's ice-phobic surfaces, so he caught up with him at the ACS National Meeting in Washington, D.C. last week. Talking to a chemistry magazine at a massive chemistry conference, Tateja told us that the secret behind his ice-shedding surfaces was, in fact, not chemistry. There's essentially a limit to, just based on chemistry, what is the lowest ice adhesion values that you can get. Chemistry can sort of take you only so far, um, beyond which you can't go. And so that's where we start to look into mechanics or the physics behind how ice adheres onto different surfaces, particularly different rubbers. Developing surfaces that shed ice is a big deal. They can make for safer air travel or prevent power lines from falling after ice storms and lead to less frustration for you when you're unpackaging frozen foods or scraping your windshield. In the past, researchers have focused primarily on surface science to reduce ice adhesion. For example, Hydrophobic, microscopic, or nanoscopic structures can help shed ice, but they're not always feasible for commercial macroscopic applications. And in cold, humid conditions, they can actually help condense water, which can then freeze. Tateja's team looked beyond surface chemistry and realized that ice, which is hard and rigid, struggles to stick to things that are not hard and rigid. That got the team looking at all sorts of polymers covering a span of mechanical properties. Researchers can further tune those properties by working oils and plasticizers into the polymer's compositions. So some chemistry plays into it, but beyond that, it's all governed by mechanics, and you can sort of be almost chemistry independent, and that's why we can make all these different formulations. We've discussed maybe hundreds of different formulations at this point. All of these different formulations can be helpful in addressing a variety of applications. For instance, for developing food packaging, you'd want to look at only FDA-approved polymers and oils. And you can examine more resilient polymers that would be more useful for keeping ice off of airplane wings or wind turbine blades. Tateja published these formulations last year, and at this year's meeting, he unveiled a mathematical formula to help predict ice adhesion values for different polymer and oil combinations. But maybe the bigger news is that consumers might soon have access to one of the team's formulations in the form of a spray-on coating. The commercialization might happen either this year or later on in the next year, depending on which partners we actually team up with. Were you at the meeting last week? Let us know about the most interesting science you heard about in the comments. We're always looking for story ideas.